Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Everything Vaguely Paranormal. I'm Shelly Pruitt, and my partners in the paranormal, Mr. Blake Smith and Mr. Ryan Roberts. And, of course, we got our producer, Brittany, uh, backstage pushing all the buttons and answering all your questions, trying to make us look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good luck, Britt. Um, <laughs> anyway, hi, guys. How are you tonight? Great. Good. I'm finally back from death's door. Let's do this. <laughs> welcome yet. back. Oh so it's plus. No. So I'm glad you could be on here, and <laughs> and uh, if if uh, you are a Patreon member, you can hear about our last adventure that Ryan and I went on this weekend. Might have been cocktails and trespassing involved. Go become <laughs> a Patreon member if you want to find out. Allegedly. Allegedly. Thank you. <laughs> but guys, tonight we have got a great guest with us. It is Bill Walter, who is the owner of Broadhead Manor in Broadhead, Wisconsin. And he is also the host of the upcoming charity event called Spirits in the Spring that uh, is being put on by Nick Sarlo. And they have some great guests that are going to be there. They have Nick Simons from 28 Days Haunted. Mm -hmm. They have Aaron G. Thompson from 28 Days Haunted. Um Gosh, there was a whole bunch, and those are the two, and I just completely blanked on who else is going to be there. But they have a lot of cool people going to be there. Go to the site, Spirits in the Spring, and look it up. So tonight, we're going to let you talk to the man who owns this haunted manor. I don't know if I should call him Sir Bill, because he owns a manor. Sexy um, Bill. Sexy Bill. <laughs> sexy Bill. Okay, Sexy Bill. Well, let's bring on Sexy Bill Walter. Sir Sexy How about Bill. that? <laughs> Sir Sexy Bill. Sir, there you go. Yeah. Sir Sexy Bill. <laughs> Hello, Sir Sexy. How are you tonight? <laughs> okay, now I'm bright red. <laughs> Mission accomplished. And Im immediately he's like, why the hell did I sign up to be on this video? Oh, no, 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 no. I want to be on the show. Just <laughs> my camera just a little bit. He there doesn't sound as convincing as he did on right before we started, does he? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> so, Bill, I want you to tell us all about your wonderful building. Now, when did you buy the Broadhead Mandor or when did you invest? Is it a purchase or is it an investment or what is it? Or you just wanted to own some place that was haunted? Sir, so I didn't know me. it was haunted. That, that's the one thing. I did not know it was haunted. I bought the school because I run a haunted house. Oh, so, you bought it to okay. be uh, uh, we, an attraction. Yeah, we used, we owned, a, we were part owners of a haunted trail out in the middle of the woods. We got tired of doing everything in October because the rain, the snow, the, the weather. It's cold existed. up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we decided let's move it inside. So I turned around and went on Zillow and found this old abandoned school that somebody was just giving away negotiated the price and now i own an old middle school <laughs> wow so, so tell us about that because i i i knew that it had been a school but i didn't realize how massive it was so tell us kind of how you because it's you it says broadhead manor which leads you to believe that it's a it's a you know a lovely english estate or something like that, that this that's is a what school everybody thinks but the state of wisconsin made us change the name and a legal thing they did not they did not want it to be known as the old Broadhead Middle School anymore. They said, "You now you own it, name it what you want. We'll go through the paperwork. We got it. I figured, okay, for a haunted house, being in a location, Broadhead Manor would be the perfect name. We researched it, got the name, and now it is now known as Broadhead Manor. Um, we moved the haunted house in there five years ago, roughly. Um, it's almost going on its sixth year that I've owned the building. Just to open the haunted house, it took us four months of cleaning to get the garbage out of that building. It we had we hauled like ten dumpster loads of garbage just out of the building. Ooh, the down, they ripped everything down. People who owned it before me gutted it. You know, so it was pretty much demolished by the time I get it, but there was no graffiti, there was no kids in there, there was no anything. The school, believe it or not, is protected by the town very well. The cops come Good. through there once every 30 minutes and just drive through the parking lot to make sure nobody's out there. They still do it. Even though I own the building, they drive through and make sure the building's secure Why I'm not there. So how big is the town of Broadhead itself? It's roughly 3,000 people. Okay. It, okay. It's a little tiny town. It's about but, the size of the town I live in. Yeah, but there's, you know, it. We have the amenities. We have McDonald's. We have Quick Trip. We have Subway. We have, you know, basic little things like that. The dollar store and, you know, Dollar there's General. A dollar store everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. There's a field. There's a Dollar General. Yeah. <laughs> so they actually, the town itself has a little town square that 
is an actual square that you drive around in a square mm -hmm. and can go to all the shops downtown. Well, since we bought the building and basically the town was getting run down when we bought the building and brought the haunted house up there, our first thousand or first year we opened, we brought in 3000 people to the town. So we doubled the population of that town and everybody saw what the town was and started going to the shops. Well, now new shops are starting to open all over town because they know how much draw we have now for people. With Spirits in the Spring coming up, we're hoping the Paracon runs a thousand people, mm -hmm. you know, and we're half of the donations are going to the Broadhead Food Bank and the other half of the donations are going to Nick Sarlo's group in Lake County. Mm -hmm for the food bank there. So here's my plug for spirits in the spring. If you all want to come out, it's April 22nd. It's from six in the morning till six or 10 in the morning till 6 PM. And it's $10 with a donation of food at the door or $20. If you do not bring a donation, there we go. <laughs> and there is an investigation afterwards. It's a separate ticket price, correct? Correct. Uh, for an extra $30, we're allowing 20, Right now it's 20 investigators to investigate the building. You don't have to be an investigator to actually investigate the building because our investigators will show you with their devices how to be an investigator. So come in and have fun, whether you're an investigator or not. We'll we'll prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all right now, the the price of a Paracon ticket and a ghost hunt afterwards for the you're not less gonna less than find. 50 bucks. Yeah. You're not going to find that anywhere else. And they That's have got steal. all kinds we, of we stuff planned have, like every hour. Right. We do have uh, 50 vendors as of right now. Wow. Um, when you were going on about our speakers, there's Nick Simons, Aaron G. Thompson. That's from 28 Days Haunted. We also have Expedition Entity, which is a Paraflix show with Dan Norville and Larry Eisler. Mm -hmm. Then we also have... Um, Patty Negri, she's going to be speaking. Uh, Natalie Jones, the CEO of Paraflix, she's going to be there and she's actually sponsoring it. We have TR3 Productions, which is one of our other sponsors. They do the Walking Dead conventions. They do the, the they're a big, big name. Yeah. Um, we also have Scary Perry's, I believe, uh, costume company. They're out of Chicago and Milwaukee. That they're also sponsoring this event. That's amazing. Man, this is this um, is packed with heavy hitters from top to bottom. Right. Yeah. We we do have uh 15 speakers total. We do have the main stage, which will be running, I believe it's nine speakers. And at the same time, we're gonna have speakers going upstairs in our auditorium, which is an old band room. Um, <laughs> those speakers are going to be going also as the other ones are going, you know, in in a time sequence that Semi works. <laughs> it's, and it's hard to pack that many speakers oh my, in one day. And before you forget to say something and you don't ever get to live it down because, you know, we've talked to Nick Sarlo as well. Shadow Hunters Paranormal Investigations and Events as well mm -hmm. yeah. is a part of this. <laughs> We're helping you out, Six. <laughs> um, they are the ones actually hosting the entire Paracon. Right. Nick Sarlo and his team are an amazing team. They are going to be doing everything they can to make this a rememberable Paracon. Um, I am actually just hosting the building. And I'm hosting that's the ghost a, hunts. That's a big deal, though, because this venue mm -hmm. costs are a lot of times what run up a Paracon's ticket price is getting the venue. And for you to very generously and graciously open your building to a bunch of yahoos you don't even know. I mean, <laughs> hell yeah, that's... <laughs> Well, well then, you, then, you, then you have the Yahoos that you do know. I mean, you know, have you have to worry about those. I'm talking to you, Nick Simons. <laughs> I have not forgotten. <laughs> either, either that or hashtag sexy like Sarlo. Or Whatever sexy like is. Sarlo. Yeah, he's, there you yeah. Go. Mm -hmm. They're both on my list. Yeah, Shelly, in the background, I didn't know how much PG rated your thing was, so I covered up my statue in the back. <laughs> you got a naked statue back there of sexy like Sarlo? <laughs> it's a statue of David, and yes, he's fully nude, so I just covered you his face. That's not nudity, just that get, is art. You just get a little black sensor box and put it over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Explicit. It's not explicit, it's art. Yeah. 
Yes. Damn good art. Right. So, <laughs> okay. so I have to ask the question. Ask you question. Bought this location to do a haunted attraction. Yes. When is the moment and what happened that you realize you got a little something more than a haunted, just a haunted attraction here? Thing, things started happening in the belt. <laughs> Sexy Legs is watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sexy Legs. <laughs> uh, things, when we started cleaning the building and everything like that, we started rearranging stuff. Well, why people are pushing shovels to scrape up the plaster and get it up onto the dumpster and stuff like that. Little things were just disappearing. You set a drill down, it's gone. You come back, it's sitting right there, but it was gone five minutes ago. You, you looked everywhere for it, and it's sitting in the same exact spot you left. it. Um, I climbed up on, I was constantly going up and down on scaffoldings that are rolling. When you get up to the top, you feel needles in your legs. Like mm. something is rubbing mm. up and down on your leg and with fingernails. And I'm like, okay, well... You think, okay, my legs are falling asleep up on this thing, and yeah. you know, you get the pins and needles. No, little red marks were appearing on all our legs. <laughs> huh. What? No, thank you. So you could actually see the little red dots all over your legs. And it's like, okay, now this is getting a little bit more unexplainable. Yeah. The biggest thing was after we started building the haunted house, I took who we call Bob the Clown. It's a big mannequin of a clown. No, thank you. Nope. We put him inside the gym and we have basketball hoops that come down, you know, so when you have a basketball game, the mm -hmm. hoops are down. Well, the hoops are gone, but the big arms are still there. We left them down. We put a TV screen up and it's 13 feet off the floor. Above the TV screen, I made a chair and I set Bob up on the chair. Oh, hell no. <laughs> so as soon as, as soon as the patrons walk through our center gym doors, and look straight ahead, you're looking directly in the eyes of this clown. <laughs> he's sitting up there watching you. Oh, hell. Well, it was funny because I, his shoulders, neck, and head are in one piece. It's molded in one piece. Okay. So whatever it was moved him. He was looking at the door. But then we came back a week later, and now he's staring at completely at the other wall. Mm -mm. And I'm like, okay. Mm. We have a railroad tracks behind us. Trains go by all the time. It vibrated over to that way. We left for a day. We came back and the actual torso moved again, looking down the center of the gym. Wow. And I'm like, okay, well, he's in a rotation. He's going around. Okay, it is vibration. I'm trying to disprove this. I'm trying everything. Well, we kept taking pictures daily and he not only went, in a complete circle to the center, he went back. Now he's going the other direction. And I'm thinking, okay, now he's vibrating back the other direction. Nope, he went back the other direction again. And he just kept moving position all the time. Every night we'd leave, we'd come back. This is 14 feet off the floor with no ladder. You can't get up there. Yeah. And everybody that... <laughs> like you, 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 you burn that motherfucker, right? That's right. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be. Can I just say I'm gonna beat Nick Simons the next time I see him? <laughs> well, you have to tell us why now. He put but, he put it in the comments. Look, buy, look in the comments. He said, "I'll buy the height of Bill from that 13 feet. How many feet are left?" <laughs> And then he said, <laughs> then he told him he'll he'll vibrate over that way. <laughs> so so Bill, did you ever decide that you might want to just put a camera that was stationary on that? Well, I didn't I have any clown? I didn't have a camera to do that with. Mm -hmm. So we invited Expedition Entity before it was Expedition Entity, it was a mm -hmm. Dan Norville part project. Him and Larry came up, they started investigating the building and they put a, a static cam on it. For a live all night long to see if people saw it move well it didn't move but dan and larry investigated the building and every other room they went in they were getting activity in every single room and it wasn't something just following them it was different voices different names different everything it's like our spirits wanted to talk at that point mm -hmm. So now, that clown was being sneaky. That's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> now, fast forward after Expedition Entity, they told me flat out, go ahead and 
don't take our word for it. We don't want you to just go by what we say. Invite three or four more paranormal groups in. Right. Mm -hmm. Invite them up. Let them investigate. I didn't tell them anything about anything we were experiencing. I let them investigate the building. They came back and told me. I tried to disprove it. But everything that every single group was saying was happening in every single exact room that they were happening in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so other teams were validating what expedient expedition yes. entity had found. Yes, that's that's when okay. I decided. Okay, we have spirits. You know, we we let more and more groups come in. That after expedition entity worked, we took that same clown and we moved him to the other end of the gym because I got tired of him moving on me, and I put to him tie up, him up. I put him up even higher. So he was good. This time he was a good 18 feet off the floor. And I I screwed his legs down to the platform he was on. Just in case, you know, I don't want him jumping here. We put a noose around for added effect for the haunted house. We put a noose around his neck and screwed yeah. that to the wall. You know, so if he jumped, he was going to hang himself. Only good clowns and dead clown. That's right. I, I left, and a week later, when I came back, he was hanging by his neck. Oh uh, no! No, he hell was no. Off no. The platform. Oh, no. The screws, uh -uh. the screws were in the board still. Something pulled his legs off, and he dropped. Holy Whoa. shit! I'm like, okay, now it's getting a little bit more yeah. active. Well, so whatever it is, it's got some oomph to it to be able to pull yeah, all that well, out. We yeah. found out what the oomph is. That end of the building where he is, or where we put him, we actually have an elemental in the building. Really? We have two of them. One at each end. They are, as it's been told to me, and I've heard through the SB7, or whatever the devices, I don't know what all the different devices are. I'm not an investigator myself. I just own the damn building. <laughs> <laughs> he has a haunted house. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's it. Well, as you can tell, look at my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, through the devices, it comes across as predate man from the mm. earth, mm. here to protect. Mm -hmm. Those things come off of those devices at mm -hmm. each end of the building. We've ran, you know, a lot of people don't believe in them, but uh, uh, what's the ones that make the SLS cameras? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We put an SLS camera on all three floors. The first floor, we got a pair of legs coming from the oh. ceiling. Mm -hmm. The second floor, we got a body and two arms. The third floor, we got the head. All Whoa. at the same time. Something big. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We call him the tall man, but it's actually one of our elementals. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in their areas, you will get eerie feelings. You will get, they can affect you in many ways. Mm -hmm. They love cell phones. If you do not have your phone in airplane mode, it will start dialing random numbers and hanging up on people. <laughs> Your phone will suddenly start to vibrate. I have just got proof from the group that was there two weekends ago. Two of their people went home, and one of them said their Apple Watch was totally scrambled. They couldn't get any of their numbers out of it. They couldn't get anything to come back oh. on their Apple Watch. And the other guy that was next to him said all of his pictures defaulted back to the original screen setting. Wow. Than when he first bought the camera. So he's just like, something was messing with my goddamn phone last night. I say it does not like electronics, apparently. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, now, Bill, I'm going to tell you something. That's very interesting because I have only been one place where I felt like I had dealt with an elemental. Strangest thing, because what you said just rang completely true with me. A couple of people we were investigating with, actually, they had taken pictures down in this basement area where that was supposed to be where it was. They come up to show pictures. All their pictures are gone off their phone. Yes. Every picture, every picture, yes. not just the ones they just taken. Every picture was gone off their phone on both of these men. I and will... then someone else had gone down later and the same thing happened to them. Like, stop taking your phones down there. Right. Oh, shit. <laughs> now, see, every, every time that people come in to investigate, I tell them there's certain areas of the building you need to stop and save everything. Take your SB, car SB cards out of your devices. Mm. 
Because as soon as you walk through the threshold of the gym, half of your material will be gone. They'll erase it. Does it just happen oh. with cell phones or does it also happen with cameras and it like static with cams? Cameras. It Everything. happens with your microphones. It happens. You'll just get static on your uh, mic, uh, EVP recorders. You'll what? just get static. Wow. <laughs> Guys, what are we going? We got to go see some sexy. <laughs> oh, you, you don't understand. I've already been looking at the calendar to be like, okay, when can we I'm make like, this happen? We can make <laughs> this <laughs> I mean, seriously, it. There, there's just so many things that happen to different mm -hmm. people at different times. Now we've had over, I would say, 30 or 40 different teams, and they've all come back multiple times because there's no way you can investigate this building in an eight-hour period of time. I'll guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. It, Expedition Entity came in. They filmed, so far, two documentaries there. Those two documentaries are on Paraflix. Mm -hmm. Um those documentaries, they made it on the first one was the first floor only. Oh, wow. shit. The, wow. floor. the second floor is the entire second hour long documentary. Then the third floor is possibly going to be their next one. The finalized wow. Broadhead wow. Manor. It, the building is that big. I mean, you... You get so in tune to one area talking to like our janitor spirit. We do yeah. have a resident janitor that's in there that's meaner than hell. He's just a grouchy old man. That's my kind of dude. Let me add it. No, <laughs> you're you're a female. I'll guarantee you. Oh no. End up throwing up by the time you leave that room. That's not that, that's not beyond good, but yeah. that won't matter. That's just like a challenge that. for her. She's gonna walk that's right it. in there. <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't understand something about Shelly real quick. I, I'll tell you this story. You may not have heard this if you haven't seen the episode, but I was with Shelly just to sum this up real quick. A guy went to do it Estes method and he ended up getting jumped. You want to tell tell it like possessed or whatever. I mean, we had to basically physically force him out of the house. As soon as he hit the ground, we got him all cleared up. He was good. Shelly looks at me and goes, I'm ready to go talk to that motherfucker. <laughs> and she walked, she runs back in there, back into that room, and she is I turned the corner with my camera just in time. She got finger in air and she's like, You listen here, you son of a bitch. And I was like, You understand something you. about this little woman right here. <laughs> Let's just say Larry Eisler, who's in the chat right now, and he mm -hmm. just said Shelly's gonna be the janitor's next victim. Oh well, welcome to the list. I'm not a victim, honey. Okay. Mm. The first time we had big names come in was last April, not the one coming up at the last April, mm -hmm. Patty Nagari and uh, Natalie Jones and a whole big group of people followed them into the building. Okay. It was supposed to be a little private investigation. We ended up with 35, 40 people. Wow. Because <laughs> everybody just followed them from the last Paracon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they all get to the building. There's multiple, multiple. We had five, six, seven cameras going off at the same time. You're watching people investigate around the building in our janitor's quarters where he resides uh you know rob thompson from ghost adventures i think it is the name doesn't sound familiar to me but i don't but he he's another known psychic or whatever mm -hmm. he's in what we call the wine cellar which was a storage room off the kitchen <coughs> as we're in, in, that, there, in a middle school they had a wine cellar no, no, no. That's our there. that's our technical term for it is a wine cellar. We're gonna oh, make okay. it a wine cellar. Okay. <laughs> um nice. in this room, ghost finders. That's it, Larry. Thank you. Um <laughs> thank you, Nick. Um <laughs> but as they were investig they were in that room investigating. Mm -hmm. Well, he's getting this weird energy that there was kids trafficked in there and there was whoa. He was saying that the teachers were involved with it. The janitor mm. staff was involved with it. And as he's saying, I need to usher these scared kids out of the room. The janitor got mad enough to push a girl. I was standing next to a girl two hallways away. The janitor pushed the girl on top of the stairs. Her name was Michaela into me. I caught her while one camera's running. Two seconds later, she pushed another person in that room that they were in against mm -hmm. the wall, grabbed Rob Thompson by the throat and slammed him into the wall and turned his face blue. Holy shit. Wow. 
he was pissed. Bring it. <laughs> now, Larry Eisler, yeah, Larry Eisler, Michaela almost fell down the concrete stairs. Yeah, I wasn't there. She would have. Wow. But, uh, Larry Eisler was down in there, and him and Jenny Coles decided they were going to, they were on film, they were doing a little investigation. Well, the minute Jenny said something, it women in his day were seen, not heard. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd be in big trouble there. As soon as she spoke up, Larry said something, grabbed his shoulders and started like pushing him towards the door, like get out of here now. Mm -hmm. And at the same time on the spirit box, you hear fucking leave. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. And well, that it, is actually on YouTube right now with Larry and Dan. You know, it, it, they put yeah. that on YouTube. Prior to that, we were all laughing because Dan was in there investigating and something kept pinching his arm while he was trying to do his little intro or whatever he was doing. And Dan got really pissed off. He's like, you need to stop fucking touching me now. <laughs> yeah. That's well, you have to tell him how to do it. Leave me alone. That's, that's just the janitor. Now, we do have a resident principal also up in the old principal's office. Jenny Davis and Jenny Coles found out that he's not a nice guy either. When you actually, if you're a psychic or a medium, and I watch people do this, I won't tell you anything about it. As you walk past that room, I've watched multiple people take their fist and go like this. Like, I'm demanding. I'm in charge here. You know, they get that mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something is telling them, I run this building. And they they investigated that room. It's in uh, the Paraflix special also where you hear on the spirit box, I broke the women and watch Jenny Cole's face just go totally blank and she feels like she's going to throw up. She gets up and she faints right on camera. Wow. And as we got her out of the room, she said she fell fine as soon as she got out of the room. The other Jenny then proceeded to get violently ill and had mm -hmm. to leave the room also. Why Dan and I are sitting there looking at each other and I'm yelling at the principal, you need to stop this. You need to stop now. Yeah. So, so in a couple well, days, he's going to watch me start a fire at the building to see what happens. <laughs> I want to go now. So <laughs> right. everything that you've said so far, these entities that are at the school seem to be very powerful. What do you think it is that makes them so powerful in that building? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Honest answer. Love it. Uh, Short no, and simple. Okay, right now, exactly. I've learned that they gain energy from putting energy into the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I have no EM pumps. I have no Tesla coils. I have huge, powerful speakers that I play in the gym and I pump up the music in the building. And once they start hearing the music, you can actually feel the goosebumps start rising on you as the energy builds in the air. And everybody that comes in, you know, if you don't want me, if you want a true quiet investigation, I hate that. It's me. <laughs> we I do too. That. I will play music in the gym. You can barely hear it in any of the other parts of the building because the building's so damn big and the gym is soundproof. Mm. But I'll start pumping that music up and you might in the building hear it, don't, 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 mm -hmm. you know, the little bass of it or whatever. But you'll start seeing shadow figures on the third floor. You'll start mm. seeing things dart from one room to another. We do have a back crawler that crawls down the hallway just to scare you. He's, that's all they do. They're kids. They want to play. That's you know, the class clown doing that. They, mm -hmm. they, they love to play with you. When I pump up that haunted house, get the energy going in that haunted house. We start, you know how you look at orbs as dust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody complains orbs are dust mm -hmm. on your cameras and stuff like that. When you're standing there and all of a sudden a visual in a totally black room, it was a black maze. You had to feel your way through the maze to get out of it. People are not using their cell phones or flashlights or anything like that. And a white glow goes over the top of the room. And that's, again, a 10-foot high ceiling. So how is a white glow going across the top of the ceiling? People come running out. I had patrons run out. I had the actors run out. 
we're never going back in that room. There's something in that room that's bouncing from corner to corner to corner, creating this white eerie glow. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Go in there, sure as shit, this thing pops up from the corner and shoots across the room. It's a white ball. So, so have you? You've actually had actors quit in the middle of your haunted attraction. Room. Yes, yes. Love it. <laughs> so just, if it's not from me scaring the shit out of them, because I do dress up. For the <laughs> house, what my actors know now is, if you're going to work for me, I want to see how good you can scare people. I'll walk backwards through the haunted house without you knowing I'm there. They call me the Silent Ninja because I. Or the fat silent ninja. <laughs> uh, because I can walk through the haunted house without you ever seeing me or hearing me. And I'll walk up behind you and go, Are you having fun? Right there, <laughs> the actors want to quit. <laughs> You're lucky you don't get That's punched awesome. because, you know, the spider flight, mine's always fight first. <laughs> I've had people fight or flight me, and I just stand there and look at them and go, Okay, now next. <laughs> 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 yeah, but see, the thing is, is that Shelly's so short, she's so close to hell that she might turn around like, and knock, <laughs> knock you in your nuts that's instead, man. That's that's like, women are so mean. I <laughs> <where we're laughs> <from. people. laughs> uh, so, so do you know, so what is the, I mean, is there something in the history of this building other than being a school? I mean, did something take... Mm -hmm place here that just has attracted all of these spirits yeah, what's or the, what's what the it is, of this? is from the way it's been described to me is that school was the happy place of a lot of kids mm -hmm. you got to figure you're an old farm town what do you do every day you go to work mm -hmm. to chores you, you get up at five in the morning and then you get to go to school at eight in the morning you get to see your friends you get to see your teachers you have fun in the playground you do everything like that you get off school you can't go play with your friends you got to go work the fields you got to milk the cows you got to and then go to bed yeah start this over day after day after day we found out that what our kindergarten class starts at the age of four to five years old you know for kindergarten maybe six their kindergarten also started for kids that were eight nine ten years old so you were in school oh. until you were 24 25 years old oh wow, wow. Hmm. okay you know if you fast forward that to yeah. 22 23 somewhere in there so we mm -hmm. do have spirits that are in that age range of 17 to 24. um you fast forward let's say to your 80s and 90s and you pass away you go to your happy place where's your happy place that mm. school was your happy place mm. and they had so much fun there now they're having even more fun because now it's a haunted house and now we can really get you going. <laughs> right. But you would think that it would be imbued with the energy of, of positivity. If they found that to be their happy place, why would it not have happy good spirits instead of these freaking clowns that are hanging themselves off the ceiling? <laughs> That's them joking with you. Now it sounds oh. stupid because <laughs> Nick, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading the comments too. Um, <laughs> We did have an old pickle factory behind our building. So a lot of kids did work for that pickle factory too. So, you know, they, after they get off school, they go to the pickle factory and you process pickles. But um, going back to what you were saying with uh, uh, why would we have the mean old janitor, the mean old principal? The negative entities, yeah. yeah if it was a happy those, place. Those are the only two that we found negative. They're not they're just grouchy old men. They're not negative. Mm. They're not evil. They're not anything. They just want to keep order. You know what I mean? They're from the 1920s, 1930s. They're everything about order was their control. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted to control the kids. Well, since I've been there and all the different paranormal groups, these kids, we've got another 13 or 14 kids that run around that building. I got Elizabeth. I've got Norman. I've got Rebecca. I've got Thomas. I've got all these different kids we found out their names and we found them in history too we, i was yeah, just about to ask that them. um there's a lot of history to these kids we don't let it out because they still have family living in town and i don't want to exploit the family right. name so mm, i don't let yeah. the names out you know their last mm -hmm. names and stuff like that but we have gotten last names when you have an estes session plenty of people do estes now when you have an Estes session and you can sit down and I'm sitting 26 foot 
away from the person and whispering my or asking my questions. And the person under Estes goes, Lewis, turn your camera off. And I'm like, okay, how did he know the camera's man, cameraman's name was Lewis? <laughs> then I turn around and I go, who am I speaking to? And he's like, you know. And I'm like, no, I don't. You know who you're talking to. And this happens to me a lot. And he, I go, is this Norman? And he's like, yeah. Well, in the Estes session, I've watched many Estes sessions. You ask a question, well, you wait 20, 30 seconds before you ask the next question because you're waiting for that response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As fast as I'm talking to you right now and you're answering me is how fast these Esther sessions go in our building. So you're having wow. a legit real time human to human kind of conversation. And if you have a double Esther session in some of our classrooms, they will go back and forth talking to each other. We've each had person, that happen to us whenever they'll, they'll have and I a perfectly do good conversation and they'll they'll tell you who's in the room. They'll tell you you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I've got so much patience to be watching these guys. <laughs> dude, Nick. It's the only thing I have to do in that building. No. <laughs> so you see, so you've had the investigators come in and you've had the psychics come in and kind of give you names and you found these people throughout history. Have you ever had someone from the community come in and tell you any stories about oh, yes. your time at the school? Every year we host a community day because the, the community, the older community that went to school there, it closed in 96, so there's still mm -hmm. a lot of people living that went to that school. We have a community day where you can come in and tour the building, see our changes, reminisce, say this was my English class, this was my, you know, they just love to reminisce about the building. We put on one community day, we provide everybody food and drinks and stuff like that, and just let them reminisce for the whole day and just have fun. We usually get a turnout of four or 500 people. Wow. So we we get a lot of stories from all these people. You know, they come in and they start talking. Our one of the last janitors in the building still lives three blocks away from us. He's in his oh, 90s cool. and he tells us stories about that building constantly. He tells us how the in the middle of the night the boilers used to just shut down for no apparent reason whatsoever. Well, that was some of the spirits playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he believed. They were ghosts. Yeah. I've had multiple people tell me that they used to be in class and something would tug their hair. Something would, wow. you know, do little things like that just to get noticed. You know, they were trying to let them know they're there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so they've been, so, so they, and what you're saying is they've been there for quite some time. All these spirits mm -hmm. have, I oh, mean, yeah. obviously oh, like yeah. if they're pulling hair in classes. Yeah. And with our research and our, everything we've been, we made a book that we have in our lobby of the history of the building that you can sit and thumb through and read through all the newspaper articles and a lot of clippings from way back when we have the old records of the attendance sheets and all that stuff from the 1906 oh, cool. to 1910 range wow we just recently found out that our uh, the original building from 1865 sits under our building Oh, we have a, be uh, your source right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shut <That's> up. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, but once you, Nick, you were only there for two hours. Um, <laughs> Wait, what did he say? Now, if you're going to do that, you got to he said, what he said. He said, Haley wouldn't let me read it talking about the book in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> in that crawl space, we went down there and we found the old floor joists that were from the original building. There's a crawl space. Uh, yeah. Did you see my eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Sully are like, wait, there's a crawl, crawl space? space? <laughs> yeah. I'm in. It, it's five feet tall. I have to have you put on a hard hat because the ceiling, the concrete in the ceiling has nails sticking down from the floor. Oh, I'm, cool with that. Oh, I'm short enough. I wouldn't even touch it. But <laughs> it, it covers a quarter of our building and you can see where they backfilled part of the hallways and stuff like that with the old bricks and the limestone. Oh. Hmm. The original limestone, limestone. foundation is still yep. under that building, and they That's built it. the building on top of that limestone foundation. That's your source right there, Bill. Oh, I'm no, telling you right, right now. There. Yeah, that's yeah. your source. Limestone, straight up freaking limestone. Oh, yeah. Stone tape theory yeah. going on there. No, I mean, we, we, we discovered so much with this building. It's just, 
Now I have to go back in history even more to find out about the old building. And we just received a picture of the old, old building that was there. Oh, so wow. Was um, it a school then too? Yes. It was the okay. original school for Broadhead, grades one through 12. This school was grades one through 12 up into the 50s. And then they started building more schools in the town and shifting kids around all the time. So it was once an elementary school. It was then a high school. Then it was a middle school. Then, you know, all that different stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, as we've been researching it even more, we found out in the back southeast corner of our property where the railroad tracks come through, there used to be an Indian burial mound. There was a oh, total of eleven of them. No, 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 no. There was a total of eleven of them in town. When the railroad came through, they flattened six of them. Oh, God. Wow. And the other five are spread out through town. Well, that's what we decided. <laughs> Sorry, I'm dying over here. Are you like are you watching what they're typing? I can see the comments. Larry, <laughs> right now, Larry and Nick are going back and forth, and it's kind of quite hilarious. Uh, <laughs> okay. So y'all are going to go back and read the comments. And yeah, 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 you're going to have to because you're going to die. <laughs> um, but the way our property is taxed, the building sits on its own piece of property. Mm -hmm. We have one acre that's next to us across our parking lot that's separate. And then there's a small triangle piece of property in the back by the railroad tracks. That triangular piece railroad of property tracks. is that is taxed separately. And if I ever dig back there, I have to have a state archaeologist on site mm. in case we run into bones. Mm. That's probably but where your that, articles are coming from, too. That, that's that's... I found out that it was a burial mound back there. Mm -hmm. There are two trees planted specifically on each side of the, yeah. I mean, I'm taking there's, notes. There's two trees planted specifically on that piece of property mm -hmm. on each side to denote where the edges of it were. Mm. And the railroad track runs right in between them. Now wow. you want to go even more? Four blocks from there, everybody that went to school at that school that has passed on is buried in the cemetery four blocks there's away. There's a cemetery four blocks away, okay? Mm -hmm. Gee, Not Bill, <laughs> where does this source of all of your hauntings come from? <laughs> I, I have no, no idea. idea. No. <laughs> You, next time it's just he's not lying. You know how to use the internet. You can see the triangle yourself. Yeah, I'm going to have wow. to go look it up. Um, but what is really strange, <laughs> another fact in our haunted house, we've got an autopsy room. Okay. In that autopsy room, we've got a morgue table and an embalming machine that That's were donated nice. by the local funeral parlor. Oh, mm -hmm. the local. I'm in. Local. Yeah, From got the it. From 40s and 50s. So yep. the, that morgue table still had hair and blood and teeth in the tubes coming off of it when we cleaned it. <laughs> Why'd you and clean now it? It's part of our haunted attraction. Shelly's so, mad you cleaned it. Why'd you clean it? <laughs> we had to clean it. It oh, okay. didn't look that good. So listen, right. <laughs> I have I have performed an Estes method on top of a morgue slab before uh, and had an autopsy performed on me in the middle of it, which was very painful. Yeah. Um, that's that's not fun. I'll think I'll, it's Shelly. It's your turn this time. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I'm the one that crawled into the 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 you morgue crawled into the refrigerator the, yeah. at Waverly Hills. Oh, Hill. damn. So I, I guess can, it's I, my I, turn. Yes, Ryan's turn. <laughs> no, but I'll do it again. I don't care. You know, no, Brittany, I mean, Brittany, she's the newbie. She's got it. Morgue slab. <laughs> I'm in. I'll do it. You know me. I don't care. Put me in there. I'll do it. So Let's it, it do seems, it. I was going to say, it seems like the school and what you're doing now is such a positive, has such a positive effect on the community and the community seems to really rally around it. We're trying. But, <laughs> but do you, do you catch any blowback from anyone in the community about the school and what you're doing? Yes. Oh, are you in a good Christian town where you're going to go to hell because you promote the devil's <laughs> nutsack or whatever? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. I ran out of words. Leave me alone. Shut up. <laughs> nice, Nick. My haunted house is messed up. He covers all the dummies in Vaseline. I still haven't got all my, <laughs> all out of my beard. <laughs> Keep your beard off the dummies that are Vaseline done, Nick. <laughs> But uh, we do get flack from some people in the city, the older, the very old generation, we get flack. 
we're a whorehouse, we're the red light district, we're everything under the sun, the rumors fly like crazy. Mm -hmm. But our three neighbors that are across from us, you know, across from the street from the school, mm -hmm. they guard that building like a hawk. I can be, I live an hour away from me, uh, from the school, I live down in Illinois. I just go up there and work. I'm restoring this old high school myself. So when I'm when I'm not there, if kids are playing back there, like they're breaking in or something like that, the neighbors will call me, first call the police, then they'll call me to let me know. And then the police call me directly after that, tell me, yeah, we caught these kids. What do you want to do? I said, take them to their dad and beat their ass. Because <laughs> <laughs> up there, they still will beat their ass. You know, it's the kids are very respectful up there. Mm -hmm. So, jeez, oh I'm sorry. I keep, I got to quit looking at the comments. It's okay. <laughs> with, with that, have you ever been called to the place where they said someone's inside and gotten there and there was never anybody in there in the first place? Oh, yes. <laughs> we had, I know I locked the whole building up, but the police drove by. They said our back door was propped open a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know the building was locked. So I don't know who unlocked it or got in there or opened that door. I'm on the phone in Illinois with the dispatch and she has the cops in the building already. Mm -hmm. They went directly up a staircase to the third floor and they're going to work their way all the way down. They're up on the third floor. They found nothing. They went down to the second floor. They found nothing. They went down to the ground level as they're walking through. They went to the gym and as soon as the cop went to the gym all i heard over the dispatch radio was oh shit i almost shot jason <laughs> you have a huge jason Voorhees statue standing <laughs> right there in front of the door. <laughs> now awesome. those cops will not go back through that building ever again alone <laughs> <laughs> That that's the fun. We we've been at one uh, haunted location where the cops ended up showing yes. up because we accidentally tripped an alarm. We were not breaking in here. We had permission right. to be there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And we showed up. We showed them what we had captured that night, which was a door closing on its own on command. And we were like, "If you want to go sweep the building, you can." They're like, make sure. "Nope, mm, yeah. nope, nope." They would not do it. <laughs> no, they wouldn't, wouldn't even go in. And I was trying to be all nice to them. I'm like, "Y'all can come in and see. We're not breaking in for real." We and they were like, "Yeah, we know y'all probably weren't breaking in." People that are breaking in usually don't wait for us outside. Be like, hey, we're here. And we're like, no, come on in and walk around. You come in and see what we're doing. And they're like, mm, we're going to go ahead and no, go. Y'all have a good much. night. That's, yeah. that's what a lot of people do. They, You know, my one neighbor, Rita, that is on the corner of the building, she's come over and witnessed what goes on in that building. I have a little spirit. Her name is Elizabeth. She's mm -hmm. seven years old. She loves to follow me around the building. She's not attached to me. Dan Norville actually crossed her over and she still comes back. She <laughs> to be the building because she loves being around me. I play hide and seek with her in the building. Everybody says, how do you play hide and seek with a spirit? I tell her to go hide. When I get close, knock twice. And as soon as I enter the room, you hear the knock, knock. And then I tell her, go hide again and she'll run to another room and do it. Now, there's been multiple cool. people that have played paranormal groups that have played that with her. And on wow. their EVPs have gotten the knock knock when they find wow. it. So, you know, it, it's funny because we all play in the gym a lot. I investigators won't have a single thing in that entire building. They'll have a bad night. And I told them, yeah, because they're all sitting here playing games with me. And they're like, no, they're not. I said, put a K2 meter at each end of the table. They put a K2 meter at each end of the table. Everybody has their phones away from them, everything like that. I said, now light up the one on the right. Bing, 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 the lights go off. I said, now light up the one on the uh, left. Bing, 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 the lights go off. They're like, how in the hell are you doing this? I said, it's them. They're following my commands. You know, cat balls, they'll roll them on the table. Oh, they just won't that. light them up. They'll roll them. We've got a blue. Elizabeth's favorite color is blue. So I bought her a blue yoga ball, one of them big ones. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I put it in the middle of the gym floor and tell everybody just lets everybody have a conversation. Let's just talk amongst each other. But every now and then just look at that ball. And every time we start the conversation and we start going around, they actually will start rolling the ball in a circle in the middle of the gym. Oh, and that's awesome. Yoga ball, you know, and then when you look at her, she stops. 
But if you can tear into your conversation, she just wants the attention and starts rolling the ball again. You know, my neighbor Rita came over. She sat down at the table. We brought out the mag flashlights. I put a blue one and a red one. I said, Elizabeth, the blue flashlight is your favorite color. Bink, the light comes on, and this is on camera. The light comes on and is shining in Rita's face. And she goes, oh, sweetie, I don't want you shining. That's too bright in my face. I don't want it in my face. And she's semi amazed because this is the first time she's ever seen anything like this. Yeah. And she says, ain't that damn flashlight at Bill? Well, we sat there and talked for another two or three minutes. And all of a sudden I go, turn that flashlight on. She turned the flashlight on and it was aimed right in my face. <laughs> and Rita, she sat there for the next 45 minutes watching these flashlights going on and off on command and they'd rock them back and forth when they'd try to turn them on and turn them off and I'm like uh -huh. this is solid proof it's not us wiggling the table it's not us doing this it's not a, it is on camera that we got these flashlights going on and off mm -hmm. you know Hey Darren, hi Dan. <laughs> we got we got the whole crew in the comments right now, just messing with Bill, and I think it's actually kind yeah, of fun. Dan Norbert, <laughs> Norbert, I love that. Hi Dan, Darren, Bill, Darren. They're just going you know, out. you know, Sir Sexy has his own fan club going on right now. <laughs> By the way, you so guys, that's his new name. We're so calling sexy. him Sir Sexy. Okay. Hashtag, so listen, him properly. We've so got hash hash. Him. Hashtag Sir Sexy, and yes. then we've also got hashtag Sexy Legs Sarlo. That's right. Um, hey, we're gonna we're gonna do hashtag so you need Seductive to Simons. You need to tell Nick Simons exactly what you want said right now. Oh huh? yeah, Shelly, Shelly. Oh, it's it's Sir Sexy and a no. no, 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 no. Nick's in the oh. comment. Tell him. Oh, Nick, you know what? I have not forgot. You said you were gonna send me a merch package, and you also said you were gonna send me some. Uh, Worn jeans from the 28 Days Haunted on screen. I have not forgotten, sir. I told you, you did. I do not ever forget. This is we why tried you, to tell you. We tried. This is why you never you never sign the devil's contract when you come on our, our podcast. And by devil, we mean Shelly. <laughs> Nick Simon said, I, I took Sir Sexy out to a candlelight dinner last weekend. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, yes. You say we call him Sir Sexy now because he lives in a manor. And it just seems right to call him Sir. <laughs> so. so, okay. Yes. I have I have heard and seen in comments and heard other people talk about this third floor. So yes. what is what is shocking? Is so what happens on this third floor? Because I've seen this like scared face, like all that stuff when it's related to the third floor. At least I can still get it up, Nick. <laughs> is that what happens? Not. Is that what happens on the third floor? No. Shit. No. No. <laughs> I really want to go now. <laughs> no, I'm not. Our third floor is very hard to explain. Mm -hmm. We have one room that has these big wooden beams. When mm -hmm. I bought the building, I loved the architectural look of these big wooden beams. I videotaped them. I sent the videotape to my architect. He scanned them and looked at them real good and everything, you know. I wanted to build a condo in that room just for these beams. I love the natural look of them. There's not a mark on any of these beams. Well, I've owned the building for about I owned it for about two years, and now all of a sudden, these little kid handprints are appearing on the beams. What? And wow. they're not in my original videos. Are now, you, are, so, like, wow. like, uh, and, and how high above the ground are these beams? They're about 10 foot in the air. And they're, like, appearing on the front of it or around it, like some kids are, like, hanging on it and swinging on it. Like Whatever. Kids do, or... There's handprints all over grabbing it. You know what I mean? Hmm. Wow. So I'm like, okay, no problem. This is this is something that's happening. Well, I thought somebody was messing with me in the haunted house and taking stain and putting it on their hands and staining the wood. I brought a professional painter in. He's had 45 years experience. He did a scraping of it. Stain will absorb two to three layers into the wood. Mm -hmm. When he scraped it, it was powderized. It's burned into the wood. It's not stained. Oh, whoa. What? And he's just like, okay, that's kind of weird. You know, it. he couldn't explain it. There's no way that stain or paint could have done that. And it's burned into the wood. And these 
keep getting darker and darker and darker over the time frames that we've owned this building. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was Darren Buss that's in our chat. Uh, he was there with his floor and had somebody walking around the corner of the room and you could see them. <laughs> I got to quit reading this. <laughs> um, as Darren had this cameraman walking around the corner of the room in front of the window, something appeared in front of him in a different color shade and was following every movement he was making around the corner. Well, when he reached this desk, he's like, just stay there a minute because this thing is in front of you and we just want to determine if it's you or if it's this thing or if it's something on your body. And whatever it was that was in front of him jumped to the ceiling and scurried across the beam. What the hell? <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, dude. Now, to show you that our spirits are kids and they're learning, this this is totally amazing me that they're learning more and more and more. We had a group go up to the third floor and there were, I was at the bottom of the main stairwell. They were at the very top. <laughs> Custom ass marks. I'm going to not watch this. <laughs> Oh no! Right, I have to have to tell you. By the way, Shelly, your jeans that uh, Nick has given to you is coming with custom ass marks. That's what he just put in the comments. Love it! <laughs> Love it! Make sure but I can tell what they are. The, 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 this group was up on the third floor, and I'm standing at the on the ground level in the staircase, and I'm listening to their uh, portal box session, mm -hmm. and I hear, "We are demons." Uh -uh. And they're like, the people are like, you are what? And they're like, we are demons. We're coming to get you. And I'm listening to this and I'm like, okay, they're starting to mess with the people. I start walking up the stairs and you hear the portal box go, he's coming. Just like that. And like they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, as they're listening, they didn't know I was coming up the stairs. The group didn't. Well, the group is going, who's coming? Satan. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I walk through the door, I go, what did you call me? Oh, hi, Bill. It came up clear as day on the portal box. Hi, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the children's spirits just screwing with the investigators. It is. They are. They're messing it's with messing them all around. the time. I love that. That's funny as shit. Now they're learning even more about your electronics of your equipment because mm -hmm. I had another group called I Am Paranormal. It's just one guy and his cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting there and he had a guy that was a total skeptic, didn't believe in ghosts, didn't believe in anything. And he's sitting at the table and I go, okay, we're just sitting in a little room. And I go, they're here. They're going to mess with you. Let's play. Turn your portal box on. He turns his portal box on. Well, it's got fancy blue lights. It's got crystals. It's got all these different things that are going on with this portal box. And I go, who's here? And they said, we are, you know, stuff like that. And they're talking back and forth with us. And this guy, Mike, goes, well, everybody. Okay. that Darren, that's true. They were talking about the third floor again with the knocks because they, mm -hmm. they ran out of the room because of the knocks. Um, but we had this portal box going. And they're, the skeptic's like, well, they that could be anything. Picking up a radio channel could be picking up anything. And I go, you really want to see how good they are? I said, turn that portal box off. All the blue lights went off. No more sound. Well, they couldn't get it working for 15 minutes. They couldn't get it turned back on. Wow. There was no battery. There was no nothing that they could get this thing to work. They thought it was the cord attaching it to the phone, everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I go, now you want to see the amazing thing? Turn that thing back on. Not even 20 seconds after I told them to turn it back on, all the blue lights come on, all the noise comes back on. Wow. And they're like, are you shitting me? So you're <laughs> the ringleader of the naughty children. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching them how to be obnoxious. <laughs> yes, the naughty teaching, he's teaching them how to be little shits, Shelly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. The, the other thing that is amazing, like I'll be painting in the hallway. They mess with me just as much as they mess with everybody else. I'll be painting in the hallway and I'll be standing on a rolling scaffolding. All of a sudden, 
it feels like a football player hits that scaffolding and you hear the footsteps running away and you'll hear <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Larry, Larry, Larry just said in the comments, he's the Peter Pan of the Lost Boys and Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I think Girl that's man is a wayward pain perfect. in the ass for kids spirits. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sexy peter pan to you sir Darn it. Yeah. i'm gonna take that claim <laughs> yeah i actually that's that but, should be the new name of, of broadhead manners bill's manner for wayward pain in the ass kid spirits there yeah. you go <laughs> there you go well we've been on esta sessions in the different floors and they tell you on this during the esta session music downstairs now gym stage now and they'll start demanding it now 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 wow. now and they won't stop <laughs> so i'll go down turn the music on and they're all happy we put an sls camera at the other end of the gym and aimed it at the stage and you'll watch five little stick figures appear and start dancing around in circles when the music <laughs> playing and then when the music stops they disappear <laughs> So, you know, it would be fun to set up an experiment and play musical chairs with an SLS camera and every time take away a chair and see if they will play with you. We have not thought of that one yet. That is a new one. That's you know what, what I'm here for, Bill. That's you know, what I'm here you, for. Know, you know what could be fun in there, too, is, is our little game that we play at Old Park with Tag. Play yeah. tag with them. Yes, put K2 meters in all the different corners and say whenever you run up to it, if you'll tag mine, I'll yell tag. And then yeah. you have to run and tag mm -hmm. someone else. There's another yeah. idea. Yeah. 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 Darren Buss, is, he's in the chat right now. He brings up playing cards. He brings up different things that are games, checkers, you know, different mm -hmm. stuff like that, flashlights. Now I can't look at Blake and I can't look at the comments because every time I see a comment come up, Blake is over here busting up laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's because Nick's over here still talking about his pants and he said it, that's better demands uh, than Shelly pants now. And he said he was going to ship it <laughs> under the name, where the hell did it go? Nick's custom Cougar Care Package Packages. <laughs> 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 can't with these fucking comments tonight they're killing me <laughs> i told Water you it said, was gonna be fun tonight I'm a cougar, you asshole you guys you guys are being nice to me compared to them <laughs> <laughs> send me my shit nick anyway <laughs> <laughs> well while, while you continue to start I, or ryan before you ask your question whatever i'm just going to say we got a couple of pictures of, of broadhead matter uh that we took from the facebook hope you don't mind um <laughs> oh wait i that, do have to bring up a comment in your little video that you made before this oh shit there's a newspaper clipping that says mental patients, whatever. I have Believe that down to That story is a made up one for the haunted house. We have oh, a series. Really? We made a series of news front page newspaper clippings that we sent to the newspaper to print oh. about the janitor rounded up all these mental patients, got them into the building, gave them each award inside the building to make it a small insane asylum. And then when you go through the story, it gives you the backstory on all our characters in the oh, haunted house. That's awesome. And that is it was so bad that the first year we opened, the entire town thought it was an insane asylum. <laughs> and did these are the, people that live there forever. Did the paper not check their source or were they just printing it? We told them to print it as a joke for <laughs> our haunted house. But that was like the story. The front page. Yeah, that that, that was. They, they put it on the front page. Yeah, just but that, the phone. That's him. <laughs> they but yeah, but that that's if the. You would have looked at the newspaper clipping and read the date at the top. It was, uh, like January first, nineteen fifty-two, January something, nineteen seventy-two. Everything was ten years apart. Each newspaper clipping was ten years apart. Just and to give the story of the haunted house. It said. Come see our spirits and our, or, or come see all our characters at the new Screamatorium Hot on House. So, did you, did you have anybody show up and be like, yeah, I remember when this was a metal institution and <laughs> always got no, one? No. Oh. Never had that, but we had a lot of people getting pissed that we were calling it a mental institution. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of people believing also. That's what freaked everybody out the most. We thought we'd do that whole world War of the Worlds thing from 1936. Oh, I love that. That's convince, so cool. Convince the town that we are an insane asylum. Well, <laughs> Brit so cool. Brittany, Brittany, throw up one of the pictures so that we can just let our viewers 
see what building we're talking about because if you haven't ever seen broadhead manor it's i mean massive. it is mm-hmm. massive that's it's it huge it's huge now see, <laughs> in that picture the the closest part of the building you're seeing with the art with the peaks in the roof and everything uh-huh. mm-hmm. that is the 1906 part of the building down in the middle of the building where the doorway goes in the front from there on is the 1936 part of the building. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And what you're not seeing is the behind, which is even bigger. <laughs> oh, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean this place is huge. It's uh did I it's 60,000, is that correct square feet? 60,000 plus square feet, yes. Jeez, please, man. Massive. According according to our our realtor and everything like that, what it's on the records of the county, we're at 74,000 square feet. But actual space that we can use is 60,000. Okay. That thing is huge. Definitely. And there's crawl spaces. I'm even more intrigued. Now, are you aware if there were any deaths on site while it was a school? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Read read one comment from KJ May. I have to say it. I can't take it. But does your dildo light up? If so, could, that could be a game. Who can find the light up dildo? <laughs> that's that's Megan, by the way. That's Megan. <laughs> oh, they're talking Megan. about. You're, they're ta- I know what they're talking about. No, it does not. But we can play. <laughs> find the rooster. That's what oh Shelly can bring. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go hunt cock? <laughs> <laughs> well... My original condo. That oh, I thought he was going to say condom. <laughs> <laughs> my original condo that I had in the building. Mm-hmm. We call it a three-room apartment because it's got three actual rooms. It was a principal's office the where the secretary sat and the vice principal. That used to be my condo until I couldn't take the dragging on the ceiling anymore. I couldn't. As soon as you put your head on a pillow, something would start whispering to you mm-hmm. and it would drive you nuts. You couldn't sleep. So I created a new condo that's worse because now the kids can play in the new condo. They're not afraid of the principal. So when you try to lay down to go to sleep, something starts jumping up and down on the bed and you can actually see the divots in the bed as they're jumping. I am in. I want to go. I have four dogs and all the dogs will jump off the bed while they start jumping up and down on the bed. Why the kids do. But then as soon as I tell the kids to stop, all my dogs will jump back on the bed because, you know, the spirits are gone. Now they're jumping on the next person's bed that's in the room because we have two giant king size beds in that room, you know, for guests and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, people that have spent the night, Nick just said it. I've experienced the whispering trying to sleep. They whisper in your ears all the time. <laughs> and and Larry, Larry just said that they crawled on the ceiling while he stayed yep. that one night. <laughs> That'd be creepy as hell. You just open your eyes and see a kid on the ceiling. Oh, oh fuck, fuck that! Fuck as that. long you know what, as long as it's not that goddamn clown, Bill, that clown, man. Yeah, that, Shit. that clown. Right, that now, clown. I'm down, right now, just so everybody knows, I'm down. I've sold most of our carnival stuff, so we're so, down to just three clowns left. You're down a clown. Oh. So, I don't shudder at anything you've told me, but you said clown, and I'm like, oh, F. Yeah, nothing <laughs> else is bothering me so far. Nothing. But now we have clown. another person that's in the chat, Rich Leahy. He's been to the building and has experienced everything that I can. He can verify everything that I'm talking about. There, There is a lot of stuff that happened in this building that, you know, I can watch people go live here and there, you know, like Edinburgh Manor, Waverly Hills, all the different, you know, insane asylums like ISS and stuff like that. I've, I've watched all these different people going live. But watch a person go live at Broadhead Manor once. It's nonstop from when you start to when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> There's something happening somewhere because something's following you around and playing with you at all times. I am telling y'all now, as soon as this ends, we are getting on a phone yeah, call phone to call look at a you. calendar yes. to pick a fucking weekend to take our asses up to Broadhead, Wisconsin. <laughs> 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 because I, I'm I'm ready to go with all of this evidence. So 
I have one more question for you on my part um, that just popped in my head. What's the absolute most extreme thing you've either witnessed, been a part of, experienced, or heard about happening and taking place in Broadhead Manor? Be it uh, crazy, funny kids playing, kind of negative with some of the grumpy men. I mean, (laughs) or is it something you've already said? It's something I said at the beginning, which was watching Rob Thompson get lifted off the floor by his neck and turn blue. Yeah. And Larry Eisler was there. He was actually one of the videographers that was videotaping this. Um, Nick Sarlo was there videotaping. There were a lot of people there videotaping. And yes, he got slammed against the wall, lifted up. You could just see his body raise up a little bit, and he was being held by his neck. And until we got him out of the threshold of where that janitor is, we couldn't get him to breathe. He was Damn, literally wow. choking for air. Mm. That, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen happen at that yeah. building. And then come to find out through other sessions, you know, with the dowsing rods, with cat balls, with all different kinds of things, the janitor was just mad. He wasn't, mm-hmm. he was mad at what he said. There's never been kids trafficked in this building. There's never mm-hmm. been, you know, teachers involved. There's never, corporal punishment was allowed in that school until 1984. Their type of punishment was paddling, you know, stuff like that. There, there, There's worse. We've got, they. there used to be a balcony that overlooked our gym mm-hmm. throughout mm-hmm early history when they built the gym well they sealed that off they built a floor over that the steps for it they built a floor over it they put a wall up you know to make it all storage rooms in that when one of the storage rooms there's a trap door where you can go down into these bleachers and crawl all over the place well they used to bring the kids in there for iss and there's no windows there's no there's one door in and that's it and this trap door the kids mm-hmm. would get in there and they'd start talking and stuff like that well they'd get mad they'd turn the lights off on them and close the door now you're sitting in total darkness and then you hear that little floor thing rattle and it starts rattling it does it all the time it's not wind it's whatever's in that crawl space is making it rattle <sighs> <clears throat> now these kids had come out so petrified they never mess up again that's wow. a, they'd leave them locked in there for four hours oh Whoa. Shit. Mm. wow yeah, that's that's i mean that, i was gonna yeah. say that'd be yeah. that'd be traumatizing in and of itself. but i'm i'm gonna put this on the record straight for you shelly uh nick simon has said if we go up there we have to go right by his house and shelly you can get your pants at that point <laughs> Deal. I'll be he said he weekend, said Bill. they'll they'll Those still be warm <laughs> they'll still be warm like just out of the dryer feeling fresh off the thighs <laughs> Ooh, sweat okay. <laughs> <laughs> i've had worse things in my car a little juicy <laughs> <laughs> shelly just don't taste them they may be salty oh, I mean, oh, no. no thank you I have much more refined taste than that. <laughs> Damn it. Don't like salt on my food. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, does anyone right, have so any I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Yeah, well, well, hey, you know what? It can't be as bad as how far we went left with John Huntington that one time. Oh, that is it's... true. <laughs> that is true. Any final right. thoughts, gentlemen? I, I, I do think... have a quick question. Do you because you're in the building so often, do you ever get scared in your own building or do you feel like the kids kind of act as a buffer between other stuff while you're there? Mm. I am never scared in my building. I love that. I feel comfortable. I feel relaxed, everything like that. If something does start giving me an uneasy feeling like a bang or a boom or having a door open right in front of me that I just know it was closed, um, that doesn't phase me. I've got my ghost dog Maya, she's half mastiff, half lab. Mm-hmm. She runs down the hallway and will stare at doors. I open the door, she goes in, she stares at the ceiling. So I know they're there, you know, and she's growling at them. And I'm like, okay, if you watch all our documentaries that we've had filmed at the building, Maya is the star I am not. During one of my <laughs> interviews on the documentary, I'm sitting on a couch, she's laying next to me, and 
I'm doing the interview and something behind me growled. I'm like, okay, this is a little bit off the charts here that something's growling at me. She jumped up instantly and tried attacking whatever was behind the couch. And this is all during my documentary interview. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. And it, it, if something scares Bill, it, he'd probably punch it with those tree trunk arms. <laughs> <laughs> Nick thinks I Nick Simons thinks I could go out and wrestle grizzly bears with the size I am. So <laughs> new game like, in the gym. Now look, look. I I do still have. Oh, he's bear. giving us a ticket to oh, the gun shit. show. That loves our sexy. <laughs> like um, Nick just put more like Hunkles. <laughs> 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 I'm like, hey, there's a reason well, why they call him Sir Sexy Bill Walter. I, right, used, you, I used to body build back in my 30s, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> no, so you no, heard, yeah. you heard it here first. Bill Walters is going to wrestle a bear the next Paracon. That's you heard right. it. <laughs> Exclusive. There I need to do that. At Spirits in Spring, I think. I think yes. Nick uh, Nick Sarlo, if you're still on here, you should add that on there. Uh, I know you I, have 18 <laughs> other things going on that day, but uh, Bill wrestling a bear uh, is pure after entertainment. The ghost hunt. <laughs> yeah, after the ghost hunt, there yes, you go. Yes, give him a reason to stay around. Just buy, well, buy things from those vendors. Nick and Larry know they're they're Nick is coming for the entire weekend of the Paracon. Uh -huh. I told him he's my guest; he can stay there you know, for the whole weekend, Larry and Expedition Entity, they can stay for the weekend. The funny thing's going to be is Friday night, all the vendors are going to get there and get set up. Well, part of your vendor price was you get to investigate after you get done vending from 8 p.m. till midnight. Mm -hmm. Well, then after midnight, Nick Simons and Larry and everybody, they've got the building from midnight to 6 a.m. to investigate it themselves. Same will happen on Saturday night. Well, Nick had already told me I got to bring the bottle of Fireball. <laughs> Nick is my kind of man. That's what we have too at investigations. Absolutely. Yeah, but I drink it by the handful. Me too. So do we. <laughs> oh yeah. So do we. We can right there with you. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Couple of weeks ago, we downed a gallon bottle between the three. Listen, of us. listen. A couple of weeks ago, uh, allegedly Shelly and Blake had uh, like eleven shots together and went down the third floor of the hotels, changing out all the "Do Not Disturb" signs from all the hotel doors. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> okay. Now, just, just a month ago, I had uh, this guy. This one of my adopted kids, Ethan. He's with Ethan's Encounters and Paranormal Exposures. Mm -hmm. he comes and volunteers with me up at the building all the time, helping me out doing stuff. Nice. He came up, we sat down and he said, let's do a shot of fireball. And I go, okay, well, I brought out my shot glasses, set them on the table. He's like, what the fuck is that? And I go, it's a shot glass. I only <laughs> drink three shot shot glasses at a time. My kind of man. Your <laughs> shell is kind of man. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> After the ninth one, he was like, how are you still standing? And I'm like, I'm doing just fine. What about you? And he's about ready to pass out. <laughs> and he's oh, only buddy. done four. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, man, that's hilarious. I'd like, I'd like to go head to head with Sir Sexy on that fireball drinking. <laughs> no, no, just what Nick Simons just said. Ethan Kumarat is like wish.com Dakota Lake lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness oh hell well i tell you what bill we are going to um wrap this up and if you would please stay on until we sign off so that we can thank you properly we have certainly oh my no gosh problem. you've been so much fun thank you so much <laughs> yeah. for coming on with us i'll come on anytime you guys invite me i'll be there absolutely awesome, well, i tell you what we're gonna do is we're gonna let blake tell them everything they need to know and then i'm gonna sign us off and you hang tight with us okay don't forget absolutely. about spirits in the spring april oh, 22nd we we're, gonna, we're gonna tell them all about i was it. just gonna no i was actually you know what he's already gone ahead bill go ahead retell all of it say you're it. welcome melissa <laughs> say, I was gonna say, say it. Spirits in the spring, April twenty second. Say a ten dollar with a food, ten dollar entry with a food donation, twenty dollars without. Um, they've got all kinds of fun things that they're gonna be going on. Go back and watch Shadow Hunters uh, episode with Nick Sarlo. He will talk all about it on that. They have things every hour, like on the hour, basically he's gone through a lot of work to get this going. Um, it benefits uh, food pantries as well as another uh, um, 
charity of two so food was, pantries, could, yeah two food pantries and another charity <laughs> couldn't think of the word charity for a second uh of nick sarlo's you're gonna be selling hot dogs <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have speakers like nick simons who's in the comments tonight um and it's gonna be taking place you're gonna have a whole lineup of speakers uh we just posted the promo for it a couple of days ago go back and take a look at that as well it'll show you all the people who are going to be there um and you get to investigate broadhead manor which you just heard about all night tonight, which is fantastic. So uh, on top of that, whatever social media channel you're watching us from, uh, don't forget we are across the board. So go make sure you follow us across the board. Find the link tree link in our About Me or Bio sections or in the description of our episodes. Click on that and be taken to wherever you want to go, including every social media platform, our public investigations, as well as our Patreon page, where just for just $5 a month, you will get hours more of us acting like stupid, idiotic lunatics. Um, it's fun, I promise. Go check We're it out. We're still having more fun than most people. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> if you exactly. order contacts, I'll order you guys, order you guys each a set of contacts. Oh, I oh. do. And as always, if you have any Sports. comments, questions, or even concerns about Shelly drinking fireball too much, uh, you can send those to the <laughs> EVP pod at gmail.com. That's T H E E V P P O D at gmail.com. Mind your business. <laughs> Y'all like, share, and subscribe. And so, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for watching Everything Bagley Paranormal. I'm Shelly Pruitt, and for my partners in the paranormal, Mr. Blake Smith and Mr. Ryan Roberts, we would like to ex extend a very special thank you to Bill Walter, owner of the Broadhead Manor in Broadhead, Wisconsin, host of Spirits in the Spring. And Sir Sexy, thank you so much for being on with us. You're very welcome. And, and Brit always, Brittany in the green room. And oh yes, and our producer Brittany making us look good because child, you know we need all the help we can get. Mm -hmm. But right. uh, thank you so much for watching everything vaguely paranormal. And as always, we will see you next Tuesday. Bye y'all. Bye you guys. Bye y'all. <laughs> <laughs>